Over the last few months, I've been testing hundreds of different material samples using this custom tensile testing machine. I even created an interactive website with all the data that anyone can use for free forever. All right, let me explain. I like making projects, and usually I end up using a lot of 3D printing, but I never know what filament to use. A lot of times it seems like I end up picking just based on the color. Ooh, it's blue. But the inner engineer in me wants data. So that's what led me down this two month rabbit hole. One of the most basic types of material testing is called tensile testing. In these tests, you take a sample that looks like this. In my case, I use the specs from ASTM D638. You clamp the sample in and then you pull on it as hard as you can until it breaks. When properly done, this test results in data that looks like this. From this data, you can calculate the Young's modulus, elastic limits, and ultimate strength, which are really just all fancy terms for how much the material fights you when you're pulling on it. Now, the machines that labs use for this are fancy and expensive and huge, so instead I built this. The main body of this thing is almost 100% aluminum, and underneath is packed with electronics. These parts would have taken me forever to machine, so instead I had them made by PCBWay, and they turned out really well. They also used their in-house anodizing to give them this really cool look. I was pretty pumped with how this turned out. While I was assembling this, I got to use my biggest Allen wrench. This is not something you get to do every day. All right, now with the hardware done, all I need to do is devote like three days of my life to writing software and then boom, I'm done. This project required a ton of hardware, electronics, and software integration, but in the end, the system works pretty well. Now I know it's boring, but very quickly I want to explain how this works, because it's kind of cool. A Raspberry Pi controls the whole show, and sends step commands to a stepper driver, which then sends the correct signals to a geared NEMA 23 stepper motor. The motor turns a ball screw, which pulls on these two carriages attached with a load cell. This is a 500 kilogram load cell, and the Pi reads it at a fixed logging interval to give us good, consistent data. Now this is all great, but we also need to measure the strain or displacement. This is basically just how much the material stretches. We could count the number of steps the stepper motor moves, but this probably isn't very accurate, so instead I use this. It's basically just a pair of calipers, but then I'm using this Raspberry Pi Pico to read the measurements over the SPI interface and then sending it to the main Raspberry Pi over USB. All right, all right, I get it. This is kind of boring, but you know what's not boring? The sponsor of this video, PCBWay. They machined all the parts for this machine from aluminum and they turned out great. The tolerances are really tight and the parts look really good too. Their website made it really easy for me to upload my files straight from CAD and get an instant quote. Then it only took a couple days for them to machine the parts and ship them out. If you need something besides machining, they also do PCB manufacturing and 3D printing. If you do projects like me, then you may be able to use their services in some of your future projects. So check out the link in the description below. And now back to the video. The last part to install on this machine is this 3D printed piece. This is a good example of accomplishing two tasks with one part, which is like every engineer's dream. It houses two limit switches, which makes sure the machine doesn't destroy itself. And it's also the piece that ties the caliper body to the carriage. Things like this are so satisfying to design because it's simple, but does the job. Now to design all this, I've been using Onshape, which is a CAD software that I've completely switched over to, and so far I've really been loving it. For building machines like this, it's essential to have it designed in CAD so you can assemble it and make sure everything will actually go together. I was definitely a little nervous that I made some sort of mistake while designing, but luckily when I got all the parts from PCBWay, everything just went together really well. This video is going to focus on PLA. It's the most widespread and popular filament out there. And honestly, it's pretty strong. It's stronger than most people give it credit for. I use it for most of my projects and I've always had really good luck. I made a post on YouTube asking people for their favorite PLA types. And I went out and got as many as I could before overfilling my closet even more. Alrighty. All right, let's go through the filament lineup we have here. First off is a classic, Hatchbox PLA. For a lot of people, this is probably your first ever filament. But is it strong though? We'll find out. Next up is Inland, which is owned by Micro Center. Um, I have both the normal PLA and the PLA Plus. Uh, this is one that a lot of people recommended, Polymaker Polyterra. Evidently it prints really well, so we'll find out if it's strong or not. Next up we have Esun, which is another one that a lot of people recommended. 
This is also a PLA Plus. PLA Plus is really just a marketing term. I think the general consensus is that a lot of manufacturers mix in a little bit of TPU to their PLA to make PLA Plus, and it just makes the material less brittle and it should have a little more stretch, but almost the same strength. Or maybe more strength, who knows. I've also got some Sun Lu. Uh, this is also just normal PLA. Then we have this PLA Plus by Duramic 3D. This is really cheap and easy to get on Amazon. Uh, I use it a lot for a lot of my projects. And then this PLA, which is just normal PLA by Anycubic. So all of these are kind of in the middle of the price range, somewhere between 20 and 23, maybe $24 per kilogram. However, I did find that Elgu actually sells some really cheap PLA. This stuff is just $13.99 per kilogram. So that's like 70% of the price of the rest of these. All right, and then last up, we have our most expensive filament, which is Prusamin. This is filament made by Joseph Prusa and his printer company. Um, it comes in at $29.99 per kilogram, which is way more expensive than everything else we have here. Uh, so we'll see if it's worth it. I won't show every test because I've been literally doing hundreds of them, but my basic process is to print the samples from different filaments at different settings, such as wall perimeters and infill. And then I load the test sample in the machine and press go. It starts pulling on the sample while recording both the force from the load cell and the displacement from the calipers. Then I repeat this process two more times so I can average the data. Now doing three tests for eight different sets of parameters for 10 different filaments meant I had to break 240 samples, which may not seem like a ton, but trust me, it took quite a while. Now after doing all this testing, I had generated a lot of data. Originally, I was just going to summarize it in a couple plots and then show it in the video, but I was already this far down the rabbit hole, so I went ahead and built this interactive data visualization website from scratch. Before doing this, I never used HTML or JavaScript before, so I'm sure there's tons of room for improvement, but it actually works pretty well. It allows you to select from a couple different ways of looking at the data, such as stress drain plots, ultimate strength comparisons, and ultimate strength versus cost. Looking at the data shows that the highest ultimate strength was actually the Micro Center normal PLA, which was kind of shocking to me. So good job, Micro Center. Most of the PLA samples had pretty similar elastic characteristics. You can see this because the slope of the stress strain plot is pretty similar throughout the elastic region. However, the exception to this was Hatchbox PLA, which is a lot more brittle and rigid, and then the Polymaker Polyterra, which was just much weaker overall than the rest of the options. At the end of the day though, it's not just about strength, and there's way more materials out there than just PLA. I'm looking forward to continuing to add data to this database and incorporating other types of testing such as impact resistance and maybe even thermal testing. So let me know if you have any suggestions for materials, testing techniques, how to build a better website or anything else. I've put a link to the website in the description below so go check it out and I'll see you guys in the next video.